Hey everyone, welcome back to the B-Movie Bunker. Today we're looking at Hatchet. I know I'm kind of late on this one as this is from 2006. Uh, brought to us by Adam Green. What we have is the story... Uh, so there's Victor Crowley, who apparently deformed as a young boy, who apparently died, but apparently isn't dead because he lives on in the swamp, and uh, he kills anyone who, you know, intrudes on his domain. Of course, there's some people who decide to do just that, intrude on his domain, which starts off as kind of a haunted swamp tour, turns out to be more than anyone bargained for. Ah, you know, maybe I'm just losing my taste for, for, for some of the slasher-type flicks. Uh, this one just, it di didn't do anything for me, it just... I don't know if it's, you know, it gets kind of an homage to, like, you know, the 80s slashers, I suppose. But it just, I don't know, I think even an homage has to give you something new, and this really didn't give me anything new. It's 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 a, it's too stereotypical of a lot of the, the, the slashers that we saw in, like, the 80s and even the, in, in the 70s, where it's take some people, have them stand around and be stupid, and get killed off one by one. There's, there's a recurring theme in a lot of horror movies that really bugs me and this is and it's not just horror movies this happens in action films and sci-fi films as well is that hey we knocked the bad guy down well we won't do anything to try to finish him off we're gonna run away and we're gonna leave his weapon there what wait what what why why would you leave him a weapon I sorry bad guys down you've already like you know, especially when it's a bad guy that you've already shot and you've stabbed and you've set on fire. Oh, he's still alive. And he drops an axe. You know what? I'm taking that axe and I'm chopping his ass to fucking bits. Because if he comes back from that, then I'm told, then I, then I know I'm really fucked. But you know what? If he just can't die, but I chop him into pieces, what? His head's gonna roll after me and you know gnaw on my ankle. I don't understand the 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 concept of all the time of leaving the weapon behind, or the stab the bad guy, even though he's died 20 times before, I've seen, he's, he's been stabbed he falls down and then comes back at me later but I'm going to stab him, look he fell down uh -huh. I don't need this anymore, I'm going to throw that knife away I don't I don't understand that, I've, I've never understood that, it's always bothered me always bothered me in movies constantly, and this one they do it not once, but they do it several times where it's like, they've got the guy down it's like, finish him off do something to finish him off by this point don't just assume, well, we're going to assume he's dead. You've, you assumed like four times already, and you've been wrong every time. How fucking, I mean, seriously, I'm wearing a helmet. I can get that through my skull. So, I mean, you had some nice gore effects. You know, if, if you like that from the slasher flicks, there was some, definitely some good gore effects. Um, but the film was never really scary. And I know some slasher flicks aren't really meant to be scary, but you know what? A good slasher fit can still be scary. It can still, you know, put you in that, you know, where you're like, oh, you know, kind of gritting your teeth and, you know, and holding on to your chair. I mean, Halloween, the original Halloween, that had that. And this, it just, it was campy without really being campy, if that makes any sense. I mean, scale of 1 to 10, ah, so this is kind of an homage to, you know, the 80s slasher flicks, you know, or kind of a redo or a rebirth or whatever. A reboot who knows what what you know I'm sure there's much more people who have talked about this than I have over the seven years since it came out but this feels like kind of like the 80s not saying it's it's like of the quality of like some of the 80s slasher flicks but the 1980s themselves where there, there's a little bit of glitz and some glam meaning like the gore but overall it's kind of hollow and empty and there's plenty that you you know you feel kind of embarrassed about I mean uh, and that is making it seem like it's a worse movie than it actually is I didn't think it was a terrible movie I just think it was kind of a meh kind of movie it wasn't, from what I heard from some people I was expecting to be blown away by this like, you know, it's like reliving you know, Friday the 13th the first time or Halloween the first I was expecting to, you know have that kind of feeling in it, or at least something like it, I mean, you can never truly go back but, you know Maybe some of that tug and nostalgia, you know, those heartstrings. Says, hey, remember when you first saw Jason, or you know, the first time Freddy killed someone? I I didn't get that at all. So I'm gonna watch you watch you know Hatchet Two and Hatchet Three, and I don't you know Hatchet Four, Five, Seven. I don't even know how many there are now. Um, but I'm gonna check those out too. I've heard that you know, most people I know who like this one 
think that the rest are worse than this, which doesn't make me feel real positive about what I'm in for, but I'm going to do it anyways uh, eventually. So that's all I got for this one. Until next time, why don't you all stay safe out there in the wasteland? And for God's sakes, double tap, double tap, or double chop, whatever, something. Make sure that fucker's dead. Dead. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Chop him into bits. Burn the parts. Scatter the ashes to the four winds. Shoot some to the fucking moon. Just make sure it's dead, 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 dead. If You know, an immortal, great. If, if someone's immortal, you know, chop their parts up and spread them all around and they can't do anything to you. Ugh. This shouldn't be that difficult. Shouldn't. It really shouldn't. I gotta go.